Yo, my name is Carla. Narika. And this is The Bench. The Bench. Welcome to The Bench. The Bench. How's it going, fam? I'm alright. Happy Human Rights Day. In time of shooting this, it is Human Rights yeah, Day. Yeah, yeah, No, Human Rights Day was on Sunday. Oh, and then Monday, long weekend. Yes, get my dates wrong. Oh, no, wait. No, is it's it today. today. Is it today? It's the 21st. Oh, okay. Don't listen to Narika. I just assumed every time we have a public holiday. Brainwashing. A public holiday is on a yeah, Sunday, and, and that's when we get to Monday. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but Human Rights Day at and time of shooting. Is on a Monday. Okay. So, yeah. Damn. You off work, you know, enjoying your long weekend. How was your long weekend? I, I slept. You slept. I had a lot of work to do. Yeah. That's always Narika's uh, I didn't thing. do any of it. Yeah, but every time you see you, you just stay on the laptop. Yeah. Get my nails done, so that's how I type now. It's nice to rest once in a while. Oh, Good to see my you My body rested. said no. Are you even trying mm. to read? Said no. Mm-hmm. I just watch sports, to be fair. Yeah, there was. Sport, At least there was some sports big, on TV. Big sports yeah, 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 yeah. But... We got our long weekend started off on a good note. Yeah, on the Friday. It was amazing. It was amazing. We loved it. We finally got what our did wish. We do? We, I was getting there. Okay. I was getting We got our wish to go into the stadiums. Into one Well, stadium. you were in the stadiums before, but it's my wish to actually go to a live game in like three years' time. In three years? Yeah. yeah. One stadium? Insane. We went to watch um, some live football. Yes, we went to go watch Amazulu vs. Raja Casablanca. I think it's Raja Casablanca. I think it's Raja. I don't think people say Raja. No, I heard the, I heard the translator and the I coach heard the coach. Ra- the, co- the coach said Raja. He Did didn't he? say Raja. That's all. It, it's not the spice. That's all I know. Isn't but nice? anyway. But they play some spicy football. They play so. some spicy football. So we did catch their Cap Champions League game. It was but nice. Bef- we were in the media box. I was about to say, before yes. we start speaking about the game. Yeah, I know, but I'm just explaining the experience. We were there for the game, but the experience was also very nice. Media, guys. Yeah. We got those little, what are these tags that said media. Mm-hmm. We could mm-hmm. go anywhere. Yeah, Whenever we wanted to. I don't think anywhere, but... Uh, no, we could. I feel like we, we could go anywhere. We just walked anywhere. No one said anything. Yeah, we just like flashed like... Police were looking at us. I was caught at two stepping on the field during the game. Mm-hmm. I didn't. But no, you could have. I could have. Low-key. I feel like I could have. Just be like, no, I'm just content. And then they would have allowed me on. Yeah. And then there was Lamini running up and down. Yes, they should have subbed him on. They should have subbed him they on. They should have subbed him on. random supporter was doing sprints. Yep. And like they were showing the passion, toe taps and like warming up. I think he up. was trying to motivate the players on the field. The players didn't see him. Yeah, but the oh well. Had, he was tiny. It was a nice experience. It was a great to experience. be around the fans, 100%. to be around other. I think they we'd call them our colleagues mm-hmm. now, you know. So it was kind of nice. Hopefully we can do it again. But yeah, amazing start to the long weekend. Brilliant start mm. to the long weekend. Before we go back to normal programming, but since. We are talking about the CAF Champions League. There was a lot of CAF Champions League action. Yes. Um, as we said, it's just football upon football upon football. All three South African teams were in CAF competition, did play. And since we on the case of Amazulu versus Raja, Raja Casablanca, Amazulu did lose 2-0. They did. Um, we caught it live. <sighs> what were your thoughts watching it live to finally see your team catch it out? It was also your team on the day. Oh, it was my team on the day because I was there representing the club, Loki, you know, okay. and ca- covering the content. But what I saw on the day, I was not surprised. No, I was I not in the, in, the, in, the, in the stands being, ah, oh my word, you two know, oh, like, you yeah, know, I'm surprised. No. I was like, I knew it. We went to the press conference afterwards, yeah. you know, heard what both coaches had to say. Really nice from the coach from Rod. Raja Casablanca. Yeah. I'm going to commit to that now. It's going to be Raja Casablanca. Correct or incorrect. Mm. Um, he gave props to Benny as a manager, as a coach. Yeah. Um, as a person. As a person. Yeah. Benny came through. My man wasn't happy. Yeah, but like, no coach. Essentially now, the Amazulu now, after this, also third on the log. They do. Essentially... Probably aren't going to make it out the group says unless some miracle happens. And it's that same know? thing. Like, he low-key alluded to the... Or Heike alluded to the thing that South African football, South African fans are yeah. all well, are all too accustomed with yeah, yeah. doing math, like depending now on another team to do the job for you, and you do your job so that yeah. you can get through and you could do the math. And he was very like critical of his team. He was. And their performance, I don't think he sounded surprised either. Um, they 
when they did get possession, they were losing possession quite easily. Mm -hmm. When they got into the final third, inside the box, they weren't converting chances. Yes. It didn't make sense. Um, but this game against Raja Casablanca wasn't... Like, it wasn't a, oh, we've never seen them yeah. perform like this. That's been their performance yeah. the entire season. Yeah, I think the biggest takeaway from, you know, asking Benin those questions and being in that press conference afterwards and actually listening to him mm. give a critique about his team was... The one thing I took away with, from it was consistency. Yeah. And he spoke about consistency in South African football uh -huh. and how players can, you know, you can be player of the season one season yeah. and then the next year, what happened to that guy? 100%. You know, you're sitting bench or, you know, more in the league. Yeah. In, in the most extreme situations. So I think he knows as a manager that last season to yeah. this season, you can see consistency is there. Finishing second continental football. Now you're now ninth you're and no continental football. I think he conceded to the fact that he knows that they're not going to make any continental football yeah. unless some miracle happens again because if they win every single game, maybe they have it a shout. They, but You could get there. From hearing him talk, he was like, listen here, the reality is this. What we achieved last season was amazing. Yeah. But like this season now, we got to just recalibrate going into next season, probably add a couple new players, you know, maybe change a couple systems. But I think all in all, he wasn't very disappointed in the team. No. He was very proud of the boys. He said the guys did well. They've been giving their all the entire season. It's just that something's missing. But that's what he said. Okay, now, these aren't his words. Yeah. This is my understanding of what Coach Benny said yeah. in that press conference. But my understanding is that his players gave 110%. Yeah. But your 110%... Might not be good enough. Yeah, you can only be as good as you are. As you are, you can't achieve like, over and above. Like as a club, yeah. as fans yeah. um, of Amazulu, we can't expect a player who's never scored goals before to go on and start banging. Yeah. To start banging in goals because they're being coached. Yeah. No, like that's not. Like you're only as and I said it before starting this rant. You're only as good as you as you yeah, are. Yeah, I mean in life, um, there's everything that goes. With you. There's quality to things, guys. Yes. And I think right now, they're missing that top-level quality yes. to be competing with the with the teams in the Champions League. They did get six points. Yes. Potentially might get nine with their last yes. game in the group stages, which will be such an achievement for the debutants in this in this competition. Yes. You know, so it's not all lost. It is hopeful, I think, going forward. Maybe next season they will make a comeback. But yeah, they took an L and I called it. Okay. We'll just circle back to that. But... Mamelodi Sundowns beat Al Hilal 4 2. Mm -hmm. Peter Shalulile scored again. Scores again. Peter Shalulile scored again. I feel like it's just a. The no. greatest footballer in South Africa at the moment. Broken record. It's just. The greatest South African football at the moment. He's not even South African, but the greatest footballer football in, in South, South Africa. Africa at the moment. Loki should be South African, but I mean. Are we know. surprised? Yeah. Wait, greatest Namibian football of all time, probably. Are you surprised that Amelodi Sundowns won? I'm not surprised that they won 4-2. Mm -hmm. Very convincing. I'm not surprised Peter Shalili scored, what, I think it's his 22nd or 21st goal of the season. Insane, you know. So much football left to be played. He could score 30 goals. Madness, you know. But 4-2 takes them on to 13 points, potentially now going to the next round. No, unbeaten. they are. They no, yeah, no, but I mean unbeaten they in are the group stages. Do you know what? Whether you whether they lose their last game or not is no no no. Like we know they're through, but like it's not to be unbeaten. They tried in the league, they took those L's, and then now hopefully in the CAF Champions League they can go through unbeaten. And then in the CAF Confed to round up continental football, Pirates beat JS Saura. 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 If Saura. you're from Algeria, let us know. Saura. Yeah. Yo, these North African. Those teams up there, yeah. they be doing bits in the continental football competition. Yeah, but I mean, Saura didn't because they took her oh. out to Pirates. Too. They <laughs> lost to Pirates 2-0. Yes, sir. Um, I think this was a better win, mm -hmm. considering the Pirates had a midweek DSTV Prem fixture. fixture. And they won. And they won. From behind. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it wasn't like they were going to lose, mm. and then they gathered themselves. So and then like, they, they look, You know, you look in the mirror, you just look around you like, Beat Super Sport 3-2, went into the weekend, into the Confed Cup, won the game 2-0. Mm -hmm. Pirates are first, then they've also qualified yeah. for the knockout round. Yeah, they qualified, not unbeaten, but I mean... Doesn't matter, they qualified. They they've threw. qualified, they threw, I They're mean... They're not going to be like Amazulu trying to do math. They have made it to the final of this competition before. Mm -hmm. I can't remember, I think it was 2015, 2013. 
where they might have won that competition. So I don't know if they won, but I know they made it to the final. So yeah. I think they did win. It. Mm. I think they did win. Oh no, not win. I did. I think they did go to the final. Yeah. Your long weekend brain. Yeah. I think they did go to the final because they have the star on their on their crest now. Also, one of my friends. He wins to the final. Him and his dad are b big, big yeah. time pirates supporters. Yeah. And I think they win. Yeah. Like they booked tickets and they were yeah. like, "We're gonna be there." So I know they definitely went to the final. The issue is now. I'm just trying to recall. Hey, 2013 was long, guys. Almost 10 years. Colin wasn't even driving. Right. Come on. He wasn't legal. Come on. He was a youth. I was a youth, fam. He was a youth. A youth. Exactly. Um, but exciting. Yeah. Exci I want to say shenanigans, but it's exciting outcomes in continental football. For our clubs. I mean, Amazulu. the clubs. Not so much, but still as a whole. As a whole. I think the, the continental campaigns for all South African clubs has been amazing. Has been amazing. Bar Maruma Gallons, but... <laughs> We know. We don't want to get into that. Bring her back home, though. Local football is where it's at. The yeah. DSTV Prem. TS Galaxy drew 1-1 to Supersport United. They did. Supersport did come off that loss that we spoke about just yeah, now. Yeah, they, they were on the Pirates. other end of it, yes. They were leading. They were. And then they weren't. Mm -hmm. And then they caught an L. Yeah. And then they came over into the weekend playing TS Galaxy. Demoralized. 1-1 one, one draw. What is going on at Supersport? A mess. I think it's a big mess. I think it's, I think it's players who are all form. And again, as I say it, we spoke about it last season on the bench. It's players who don't want to be at the club anymore. Looking from the outside, it's players who know that they their level should be of that of Sundowns and Chiefs and Pirates. You know, clubs yeah. above them. So now, if I'm just fighting for top eight and I'm not fighting for any other trophies, like what's yeah. the point? You know, they, I think they are still in the Nibbank Cup. So. The league, maybe they can, you know, finish sixth, fifth, win the Nibbank Cup, making it to Codfield competition. But right now, off of L, and now you're fighting back from a 1 0 deficit to draw a game off a penalty. It's looking bad. It is looking mm. not so great. What's looking great, though, is Cape Town City. Yes. They beat Gallant 1 0. Segway. Segway into Cape Town City. Um, Tabo Nodada scored in 89 minute for City. Mm -hmm. They could see themselves finish in continental football. And not even just Confed, CAF Champions League. Insane. The influences of the DSTV Premiership might be proving us wrong. Might be proving you wrong. No, I mean, both of us both always of say us, they, they, just, they just got the swag, they got the drip. It's just, you know. And the, their performances of recent have been aligning. Backing with, it up. Ha, have been backing, backing it, up, it up. Proving us wrong. Yeah. I guess so. Yeah. Uh, do you think they could do it? Do you think they have what it? Yeah. They have the thing. Yeah, I think the way they've been playing football recently has been very assertive, very dominant. Mm -hmm. I think they're backing it up with results now. As we always say, they that hot girl in class with personality. It's a W. Okay, no one's ever said that. We've never said that. I've said that. Okay, we're just gonna <laughs> keep on moving. We're gonna keep on moving. <laughs> Um, I think one of the games this weekend was Stellenbosch drawing to Royal AM 2-2. Mm -hmm. Four goals, one game. And you guys keep telling me, there ain't no goals in the DSTV Prem. Explain yourselves. What did you think? I think it was the most exciting game of the weekend. Mm -hmm. I think back-to-back, -back, like goal, reply, goal, goal, mm -hmm. reply, goal. You don't always see that in any league in the world every weekend. I think that's as, what as fans... We watch professional football to see, you know, the excitement. I think Royal M again are proving their worth as to why they're 100%. second in the log, you know. And I think we forget that this is a newly promoted team, yes. you know, in the league. I think so, you need to stop doing this. No, no, it's new promoted because Bloomfield says Celtic. You need to stop it. Celtic for luck. We like but anyway, towards the end of the season. Get over it. they performing out of their skin, you know. 100%. Yes, they did drop points now, so they do open the the door ajar for the teams below them to overtake mm -hmm. them. But I mean, at this point, guys, they take the leading games. It's not like they're always fighting from behind, you know. And it looks like in the squad, there's goals everywhere. They rock up. From the midfield to the strikers to the defenders, maybe even the goalkeeper. If he scored, <laughs> and I wouldn't be surprised. But yeah, exciting game. It uh, still almost got a red card. They yes. were down to 10. Yes. But then Judas. What's the amazing? Our guy. Shout out to him, man. Judas came through. Mm. Uh, scored off an indirect free kick. Anything coming from a free kick. That was indirect. Anything coming from a free kick or indirect free kick, that is from, and I've said it before and I'll say it again like yeah. a broken record, 
That is training ground. I mean, pe- as players, they mm. are they're being coached. Like what the coaches are yeah. saying to them are landing yeah. and sinking in with them. I think this one is worse though. Indirect free kick is shocking. But I think low key, if I'm a conspiracy theorist, they were set up. Because Who was set up? Really, if you watch the game, the, so the way the sequence of events happened was ref gives Cape, uh, Stellenbosch captain yellow card sent off. Okay. The end of game stop, right? He picks up the ball and he throws it to the Royal Aim keeper. The Royal Aim keeper takes it with his feet and rolls and then picks it up. And then he throws it back into play. Ref blows also. Ref's like, indirect free kick. You weren't allowed to do it. On a technicality, I think players in that situation, you do have to be smarter and be aware of the rules. But insane, you know, insane events. But yeah, indirect free kick, you don't always see that in football. It's like once in a blue moon, shooting star kind of thing. And they scored off of it and made the other team pay. And that game ended 2 2. I think it yeah. was a well deserved considering Stellenbosch were a man down yeah. towards the latter parts of the game. And William really are doing bits. But I think my favorite game this weekend and Colin's favorite game this weekend, because he had a big mouth at the start of this episode about Amazulu losing in continental football, which is fine. No, it's worse. Which is no, why is it worse? They've never been there before. Because you're representing the country. No, they've, they've never been there before and okay. they're there now. Was Chiefs losing to Golden Arrows 1 0. Yay for the KZN team. Golden Arrows, my boys, coming through. Humbling the Glamour Boys and their big mouthed fans. Connor, what happened? <laughs> Tell the people what happened. I got <laughs> I, I, I'm just laughing, guys. I'm just. Why? Arrow hey, scored hey, within Arrow the scored. first five, six minutes of the game. Knox Mutizwa, anybody with the name Knox, fam, danger man. But anyway, scored a banger off a defensive mistake from my team. Surprise, surprise. Hung the keeper, left him out, you know, like washing, but put in the back of the net. And then just a defensive masterclass, I read. The team lost. They did lose. They, they did lose. But we still remain third. And the positives... With the games in hand. The positives are the games in hand because the arbitrator ruled in our favour and told the league, hold this alpha, you know? So I think that's what scenes, I think, for any supporter, especially Kaiser Chiefs supporters, to actually see the court rule in favour of the team and not the league. You don't always see that. Usually, you know, the institution dominates the little guys. You know, but today the little guys won, guys. Kazuchis are not the little guys. We're the little guys. Ka- we won. We will play our two fixtures that we did miss in December for unknown reasons. And Kazuchis are not. The, can we just all get on the same page? Kazuchis are not the little guys. Okay. So, Kazuchis does have the ability to potentially win those two games, yeah. finish second, yeah. maybe continental football. Not, they, win, no, not they, win the league, though. Maybe Champions League football, fam. Cham- Confed. Yeah. And the last time we played Champions League football. Confed. We finished second. Champions League football. Confed. Champions League football. Confed. The last time we were in it, we made it to the final. Okay? And that was without the transfer season. So if we're going to do it again, watch us, guys. Okay. Let's just move on from Kaiser Chiefs losing 1 0 to Golden Arrows because we love to see it okay. all the time. Some upcoming games. Exciting. International break. Mm-hmm. Bafana, Bafana. It's their time to shine. It is their time to shine. So, Bafana, Bafana are playing Guinea. Do you know there's three types of Guineas? Yeah. I watched this YouTube video. Can you name them? There's four. Equatorial Guinea. Yes. Guinea Bissau. Yes. Papua New Guinea. And? Which one did I miss? Oh, you said there was four. No, I think those are the three. Okay. Wait, there's two in Africa. Oh, and then there's just Guinea. Yes, yes. Four. I was right. They're yes, four. They're four. They are yes. four. I was watching the I YouTube. I knew one was missing. I was watching a YouTube yeah. video on the history of how there's Guinea and colonized yeah. and all yeah. of that. Um, and why. Mm. Go watch it, guys. Go YouTube. Why Guinea is Some named history. Guinea. History. History for you. It's quite itself. intense. Yeah. Anyway, Bafana Bafana are playing Guinea. And then we play France. Hugo Bruce came out and said, I don't want a Botswana. Right, we don't want I don't to want play a Togo. I don't want Swaziland a Namibia. Swaziland or Lesotho. Let's go overboard. Let's I need to test the boys. First class ticket, treat them something nice, play ball overseas. Um, so I think these games are going to be very, very important considering yeah. that we're going to start qualifiers quite soon in mm-hmm. June for the 2023 African yep. Cup of Nations qualifiers. I will be there. 
We will be there in 2023 at the AFCON. Which is next year, right? Is that yes. 2023? Yes. Which is next year. Um, thoughts on the squad? I'm looking through it now. It's the same kind of squad that I expect Mr. Bruce to, to select. Mm-hmm. I think the most important thing is that this is the squad that he's sticking with. We see the likes of Bandila Shandu are ever making into the squad yeah. after like goal scoring performances. A couple guys got dropped. You see the return of Goodman Masele who did abscond from the squad the last time. So it looks like Hugo Bruce is the type to give players a second chance. Mm-hmm. Youngsters like Lau Foster being back in the team, you know, mm-hmm. they were under Sheikh Mashaba, they were under Mr. Inteki with the blurred out kit. So they back in the squad, see the young guys getting another chance in the squad. So it's exciting, some experience, some excitement. I think against France, you're going to see a lot of the experienced guys play. That France team squad that was released, there's some big hitters. Ballers. There's Rafael Varane, Karim Benzema, Paul Pogba has been called up. It's their, first, it's their first team. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, looking from the press conference on, and, like, paraphrasing what Mr. Bruce said was, like, we're not looking for results. It's international friendlies. Mm. You don't really go in there for three points and, like, uh-huh. whatever, you know. I think these are the times where you got to look at your squad that you have, so you're 23 players, and then you got to take stock of the type of players you potentially are going to take into a competition, you know. You tried tactics. You tried formations. Maybe even... Try different combinations. Combination of players, you know, to okay. see who works well to, with each other. So I think it's an exciting time. It is a very exciting time for South African international football after our last chances of qualifying for, you know, competitions. Yeah, I think, I think the goal now for Hugo Bruce is to get us to African Cup yeah. of Nations and then to qualify for the next World Cup. But he has come under some fire. Yes. Um, some ex, ex-pro players have come out and said, like, why include a Bruce Babuma? Yeah. N- not like they hasn't really played. their logic is and understandably so yeah. which I can like I can support yeah. to a degree going if you're in your national team you're playing regular football for your club yeah. wherever your club is yeah. whether that's here in the national league or overseas you are a starter yeah. you the guy so the guy's like a lot of people a lot of a lot of people are criticizing, criticizing yeah. who's going now you're adding a uh, Bavuma he might not play yeah. ahead of a Ron Wood Williams yeah. or a Veli Morta, who, by the way, in that Amazulu game against Raja Casablanca, well made a save. Yes. Made multiple saves, but... But there was one save that was just... Yeah, amazing. Top tier. Yeah. Um, which, why he's in the Bafana yeah. Bafana squad. Also criticizing him for, like, leaving out a Timberswane, who is arguably one of the best South African footballers right now. And one of the most consistent over the years. You know, earlier 100%. On, you spoke about consistency. He's always... Like, as what Benny said when we were there, you know, not saying tampering or anything. He was just complimenting another footballer, you know, yes. and just admiring the type of footballers we have in SA. But yes. he said Tim was one was the type of baller where a season, he always just improves incrementally. Yes. It, it's never a decline in performances, you know, and he's been doing it for like the past five, six, seven years. You and know? I, think so it's Timber, I think Timber has come out and said he's going to be retiring in about two, three years. Yeah. Why, not you, why, not, why not use him? Yeah. I think if Timbo's one carries on performing, we will see him. Does he just not fit into Hugo Bruce's identity? Squad identity. Squad I think. identity. I think that's what it is. I think that's the main thing. Especially he came out and he did speak about why he left that Andila Jali who's been performing yes. out of his skin for Sundowns. He came out and spoke about why he left Timbo's one. I think the main takeaway from what he did say was these are just not the type of players he's looking for at this moment. You know I don't so, really I don't really know what that means. So if I'm looking at I'm looking at the Bafana squad. Yeah. I'm looking at the strikers. All our strikers, except for Evidence Mahopo, who plays here yeah. for Baraka FC, are all now based overseas. But yeah. Percy Tau, Leke, Klongwane, La Forster, ballers. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. But now I'm looking at like a Victor Letzalo from Royal AM, who does score. Up there in the charts and goal scoring. Who's giving us goals. Yeah. Consistently giving yeah. us goals for his team, yeah. and we know consistently Bafana Bafana struggle to to Produce score. Goals, yeah. Why not add Victor Lutzala? Why not give him a chance, even if it is a friendly? If you are testing out yeah. chemistries, if you are looking for, if you are looking at defining your squad identity, why not add some of these players back in with your younger players? Going, okay, here's my little bit of experience. Here's the older guys. It didn't work prior with them in yeah. the team, but I'm gonna find a way to put them in. 
I think you got uh, there's some players that he left out where they've been in the squad under Bruce. Yes. They have performed so you kind of have that space to leave them out. It's not nice to leave them out, but if you want to try something new, you know, I can leave this guy out because he's still going to perform. Mm -hmm. And if the new guys don't take their chances, I'm just going to bring him back, you know? And as a professional, okay, as a person, you might feel kind of like, oh, why is my coach leaving me out? But then as a professional, you got to be like bigger picture, you know? Kind of, it. I think this conversation can go on forever and yeah. ever, but it's also understanding that there's only 23 players that can yeah. make the squad. Yeah. And there's hundreds of players that we think could do really well. Predictions, put you on the spot. Bafana versus Guinea, who's winning? Bafana. Bafana versus France, who's winning? Bafana. Drop a comment, let us know. Are you happy with Hugo Bruce's 23-man Bafana Bafana squad? Who's going to win against Guinea? Who's going to win against France? Could we see an upset? Because mm. I do remember in 2010, a certain Bafana yeah. Bafana team. The last time we played them. Played France, yeah, and we bowled out. Came away with three points. We did come away with three points. Uh, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. It's all love. Until next time, bye.